What's up guys and welcome to the Corcoran Dark Shaman Fire Mage Guide. For anybody who watches my stream you already know this is by far one of my favorite fights in all of Mists of Pandaria. I love this fight. It has every... This is one of those fights that just suits a Fire Mage so so well. You start out with four targets. You've got combustion just rolling on everything. Um, you're just slamming out those critical mass um, and ignite buffs on every single target. It's just so good. So let's get into this one. Um, what talents are we taking first off? Okay, you can take Ice Barrier in this fight. There is a lot of areas where you can use Ice Barrier, especially for Falling Meteors. If you get the uh, Iron Tomb on you in Heroic, uh, there's a lot of areas where having um, Ice Barrier is very beneficial. So I won't say that Temporal Shield is the only option on this one. Temporal Shield is the option I use, but again, that's me being aggressive. That's me, uh, you know, leaning on my healers a little bit to keep me alive through thick and thin. So I do play this fight a little bit more aggressively, um, but Ice Barrier is amazing for this fight, so keep that in mind. The other things that we go down is our bomb choice. What's our bomb choice for this fight? Um, hmm, Living Bomb. Unless you're doing progression to where all those ads aren't dying very, very quickly at the start, if you're just, you know what I mean, if those ads are up for a really long time at the start, the Nether Tempest may beat it out. But if you're pretty much, you know, if you've been going through this fight for a couple weeks and your DPS is really starting to get high, Living Bomb is definitely going to cause more damage on this fight for you than Nether Tempest. So I recommend that depending on how quickly you're killing the ads at the start. If they're not lasting more than 45 seconds, you really can probably go to Living Bomb and you'll do more damage. So keep that in mind. Uh, the other things that we need to understand um, is, let's see, Greater Invis is very, very good on this fight. Um, but Cauterize is what I tend to use. Now the reason I tend to use Cauterize is again um, because I'm specking aggressively and I know that I have Ice Black to save me if I end up Cauterizing and it's just a mistake helper because the problem is is there's a lot of damage especially at the end of the fight so if you're not expecting it or if you get hit something by something you're not supposed to you have that backup whereas uh, Greater Invis you can really negate pretty much any ability that you want but you only have it so often. So keep that in mind, because that's going to be your, your real difference there. I tend to use Cauterize, but totally up to you. Um, you're not going to see a huge difference either way. Again, if you're specking more aggressively, go ahead and take that uh, Cauterize. If you're specking safely, go ahead and take that Ice Barrier and that Greater Invis. Um, and then obviously we're using Invocation as always. Glyph wise, okay. Combustion. Must have Combustion, must have Infernal Blast. Those are your two that you must have. Now some people say you don't need Infernal Blast. Um, because the ads die really quickly you want that initial combustion to just be disgusting and also remember that when you have those oozes come out on heroic mode you can actually spread combustion to them if it happens to be up at the same time and the more of those dots that are ticking the better okay so I tend to use Inferno Blast and then the last glyph that I use for this fight is Double Blink. Uh, because there's so much stuff that can happen on the ground in this fight, because there's things that you have to get away from, like the Foul Slimes, um, having that Double Blink and that extra get out of jail free card is huge. Also, this allows you to jump into where you need to be, to get out of Iron Tombs, to get out of Tornadoes. Um, double Blink just has so many uses on this fight. Uh, move out of Meteors. I mean, there's, there's a laundry list of things where Double Blink is amazing on this fight. I have seen some people take armors on this fight, again, to spec more um, safety. I've also seen people take Arcane Explosion on this fight so they can pummel damage into those slimes on heroic mode without getting too close. Because remember, if they explode near you, they do a ton of damage to you. So I have seen people do that to try to get some more damage onto those little adds. It's really your choice, however you want to play the fight, whatever fits your play style. Um, again, during this fight, guys, as you're seeing, the mages can just do sick, disgusting damage in this fight. This fight is one of those fights where you're just going to absolutely love it every time that you pull because you get to see these huge, huge, huge numbers. Um, and it's just it's just a really fun fight. Uh, this was actually the fight. This is not the footage from the fourth rank, but the, the I think it was the third week that heroics were available. I actually ranked fourth in the world on this fight. That's how much I just love, love, love this fight. It fits my play style perfectly and when you find that fight where you're playing the right class you're playing the right spec and then the right fight falls into your lap you know the heavens open up you do all these damage all these dps and it's so much fun um but let's let's go through some things to look at during this fight okay 
So obviously on the pull, we want to combust, spread it to everything, make sure that we're dotting up as many targets as we can, that we're putting our uh, pyroblasts on as many targets as we can so we can get that nice big ignite rolling on all of them, um, and then cleaving off of our main target, whatever dog that we're supposed to be killing. Now once they separate, typically how our group does is they then separate it, melee goes one way, range goes the other, um, then you're really pummeling single target damage and you have to watch for a few things, okay? You have to make sure if you have that Iron Prison debuff, when it starts counting down, you know, when it gets into three, two, make sure you're popping your Temporal Shield, popping Ice Barrier, popping Greater Invis, whatever it is, because if you don't have a shield on you from the healers, it will one-shot you. So make sure that you're helping out. If you have that personal defensive up, it won't kill you. Even if the healers aren't really aware of what's going on, if you have your own personal defensive up, you're gonna be fine, you'll live through it. So keep that in mind. Um, Again, you want to stay out of tornadoes. Typically how we do it is we try to stay roughly in a group um, so that way we know where everything's spawning and we can just go in a circle around the room and have kind of everything behind the tank. The biggest thing as a mage is you don't want to be where the tank is going to be. You want to be where the tank has already been or out of the way of where the tank is going. The reason being is you don't want to spawn a tomb, you don't want to spawn a tornado where the tank's trying to run, trap the tank in, your claws will wipe very quickly. Again, this fight is all about um, mechanic management. So managing where you're going to put those mechanics. And as a mage, we have a lot of utility and ways to do that. So keep that in mind. Uh, the other things that you want to make sure that you're doing in this fight um, is obviously when the slimes come out, there's a lot of mages who will go and AOE them. Depending on how quick they die, uh, really depends on if it's worth it for you to make sure that you're all the way over there, you know, spamming your arcane explosion and then getting back on the boss. It really depends on how quick they're going down. So keep that in mind. If they are staying up for a little while, then yes, you do want to be slamming some AOE out into them. I've also seen some mages take Cone of Cold and just to get even more scumbag onto the ads. But again, your choice. Uh, it's up to you how you want to do that. So keep that in mind. But again, as you're rotating around the room, you just want to be using combustion. And if you can line up combustion, obviously not only with a cooldown, but try to line it up so that you know a slime, a bunch of slimes are going to come out if you're on heroic mode. So when, or if you're on any mode, really, so, so that way when those slimes come out, you can spread that combustion to them. That's the biggest thing, is you want to be able to, you know, if the more things you can have that combustion dot ticking on, the better. So make sure that you're keeping an eye on that as well. Um, the biggest thing on this fight, though, is there's a lot of guilds that will pop heroism when the boss pops their heroism. So keep that in mind, is that sometimes you won't get that huge, huge pull because you are saving heroism or lust for, you know, when they heroism or lust because the boss does heroism or lust at 25%. So making sure that you have your combustion ready for that, depending on how your guild's gonna strategize that. It may take you a couple pulls to figure out your timings, but once you get it down, you're gonna just absolutely love the DPS in this fight. You're gonna love how fun this fight is, especially for mages, how much of this fight we can control while being a mage. Hope you guys like this one, and as always, see you in the next one.